Hello there. This is uh, Zach from Those Awkward Gamers. Gonna be going over the top five Legend of Zelda puzzles. Uh, this will only be inclusive of the Ocarina of Time game because the entire series is much too much to study every single puzzle and which one is the best. This is the one I've played the most of, so I have the best grasp of which puzzles are the most memorable. I'm gonna be going over which ones I find to be the most memorable, not necessarily the most challenging. So a lot of the puzzles aren't terribly hard, some of them are, but then those wind up not being as memorable all the time. Uh, so yeah, I might go into doing a top 10 even, top Legend of Zelda puzzles, but that would have to be user generated because I've not even played every single Zelda game. I'm just starting Spirit Tracks now and I have to go into uh, the other one that's a pair game with that, but uh, yeah. Gonna be starting this now then. See you there. So the first puzzle is found in the Deku tree as soon as you find the courage to go inside of it. And uh Yeah, it's definitely one of the most memorable puzzles out of any of the Zelda games for me, and it is probably one of the easiest ones out of all the Zelda games we've ever played as well. It's actually the one right after you get the slingshot. And that's just me hitting the chest for no reason with the sword. But, uh, all you do is you get the slingshot, and then there's a ladder attached to the wall, and you shoot it and knock it down. It's like one of the easiest puzzles, but it's still one of the ones I've memorized. Or not memorized. Uh, I suppose I memorized it as well. But it's one of the ones I remember the most from playing as a kid. Because it's the first puzzle in the entire game. And it's not even that interesting, but just that it's the first puzzle, it kind of sets the tone for the game. They actually have to solve things. And, uh, yeah, that's just one of the most memorable puzzles for me, at least. Uh, so I set that at number five because it's honestly one of the easiest, but, uh, it is in the top five solely because it is the first one in the entire game. It sets the game as partly a puzzle game, quite frankly, along with the adventure aspects. And it, uh, I don't know, it always stuck with me. So this next puzzle is in my favorite place in the game. It is in Goron City, and it's when you have to find Saria's song to play to the Goron leader to get him to cheer up, quite frankly, and let you by. He, uh, this is one of the most interesting ones, I find, like, because, well, quite frankly, you're rewarded with this ridiculous dance scene that it's hard to forget. But, uh, also just figuring out what he really wanted, like, picking up hints around the town and stuff while you're doing, like, the side quests, like, throwing the bombs into the giant jar and unlocking the shop and stuff like that, I just thought was wicked interesting. And, like, the only clues as far as I remember, other than I think a m couple NPCs might mention the song, is that the Saria song is, can be heard through the, uh, shortcut to the Lost Woods. And I always thought that was just interesting that there's just like little hints you kind of had to pick up in town, as far as I remember, and uh, then you get rewarded with the ridiculous dance scene. Yup. Okay, so the next one is more of a side quest than a puzzle. I don't know. I consider it a puzzle because all you're given are the hints that there's some frogs are staring at you in the water, and you kind of have to figure out what you have to do at this place in the game. All you know is that this log is important, and then eventually you figure out uh, they can play music to them, get free money, hearts, uh, just keep coming back and playing the songs as you learn them. I always thought this one was interesting because, well, again, I always remember this one because it involves, like, songs in the game and weird, crazy scenes. I think the only reason I ever even figured this one out as a kid before using a walkthrough is because there was, like, five frogs and I knew there was, like, the four C buttons and the A button were all you could use for the ocarina. Uh, I think that was the only way I was able to figure that out, but I always thought this was just a weird Zelda side quest puzzler. So, just for its oddity, it's been placed at number three, and yeah, I think it holds its title. Whoa. Number two is emptying the well via the windmill, because this has always been one of the 
odd side. Well, it's not even a side quest. It's necessary for the story. That's always just a weird part of the game for me. I feel like for some reason, right after uh, Kakariko is burned down and everything, and you have to figure out how to deal with the monster that comes out of the well randomly. This is always one of the most like shocking part of the games for me because it was like the last thing I expected. And then uh, it just has this weird undertone with having to go into the well as a kid and everything. This one deserves number two because it involves like picking up something you did in the past and the future and then having to gather that you have to go back as a kid and play the song again and be the person that plays the song that the guy is so mad about in the future to empty the well and then find your way into the next part of the story and I always thought that was just really interesting. So yeah, that chalks up the number two material for me. Okay, so number one is the puzzle headed by this one Deku Sprout. The 32 is number one, is my most remembered puzzle out of any of the games by far, like much more than the latter one, which is very minor, like can hardly be a puzzle. That line, 23 is number one, is always, I always remember that. And then having to remember that later on in the level, like very shortly later in the level, to be fair, but uh, and then figuring out that you have to defeat the Deku Sprouts in a certain order to open the door and otherwise it's completely impossible. That has always been my favorite like little puzzle out of any of the games. It's not super complicated or anything, but like it always has just been one of the most memorable puzzles. Having the like deal with the Goma's guards almost and like how they feel like she's betraying her and stuff. I don't know. It was just like the quirky little puzzle at this point in the game. So that yeah, that's number one and that is the top five Legend of Zelda puzzles for Ocarina of Time at the very least. Uh, might be doing more of these, but uh, we'll see in the future. Thank you. Adios.